Hello students, this is Mrs. Williams from Legacy High and I'm going to go over a couple of problems, or, well more than a couple, a few problems in our algebraic reasoning classes. We are writing rules for sequencing, our arithmetic, and our geometric uh, sequences. We're going to start with a recursive rule. Now, a couple of examples. This rule is based on the previous term. Some important vocabulary that you need to know is a sub 1. When you see this, this rule refers to the first term in the sequence or the value of the first term in the sequence. a sub n stands for the value of the term that I'm looking for. a sub n minus 1 is the previous term the value there. n is the term number. Now for example, let's give, look at the sequence 1, 4, 9, 16. Now this is not arithmetic and it's not geometric. Matter of fact, it's a quadratic sequence. But I'm just using it as an example. In our assignments, this would be one that you would mark neither. It's neither arithmetic, you're not adding each time, and it's not geometric, you're not multiplying each time. Notice it says n minus 1, n minus 2, n minus 3. That's your term number. a sub 1 is 1, a sub 2 is 4, a sub 3 is 9. So that's the value of your term number. Now we're going to work through some examples and we are going to uh, use a formula. By now, hopefully, you've seen the introductory uh, video that I've sent. And these are over the specific examples that I've uploaded for you. So the first thing you need is you need to write what the first term in the sequence is. So we're going to start with a sub 1. So for example, number 1, a sub 1 would be 15. For number 2, 8 sub 1 would be 6. For number 3, 8 sub 1 would be negative 8. And for number 4, 8 sub 1 would be negative 45. So to find the next term in the sequence, a sub n, you need to know the previous term in the sequence And then you need to tell me what you're doing to find the previous term. Well, notice here you're adding 5 each time. 15 plus 5 is 20. 20 plus 5 is 25. 25 plus 5 is 30. So what you're going to tell me is plus 5. You're starting with 15 and you're going up by 5 each time. But with this rule, if I don't know the fourth term, I can't figure out the fifth. If I don't know the 99th term, I cannot figure out the 100th term. Okay, so I'm going to go to example 2, and we're going to work the same thing. And I'm going to show you some uh, graphic organizers that I use. So you need to know what a sub 1 is. You need to be able to tell me that. So let's find a marker that will write. For us, you need to be able to tell me what a sub 1 is. Okay, then to find the nth term, I need to know what the previous term is. So if I'm looking for the sixth term, I need to know 6 minus 1 is 5, I need to know the fifth term. Then you're going to tell me what kind of uh, operation that you're performing. Are you adding or are you subtracting? And then you need to tell me what you're adding or subtracting. So in other words, all this fancy writing, the only thing you need to tell me is what you're starting with, what, you, what operation you're doing, and what number you're doing it with. Okay, so for this one, I'm starting with 6. A sub 1 is 6. And I am subtracting 2 each time. So this rule here, I need minus, and then I need 
two, and that tells me what I'm doing. Okay? So what that looks like is a sub 1 is equal to 6, and a sub n is equal to a sub n minus 1 minus 2. That's what you would see in a textbook. That's the rule. Okay, let's do the next one. What am I starting with? That's a sub 1. You're going to tell me that. To find the nth term, I need to know the previous term. Tell me what operation you're using and tell me what number you're doing that with. Okay. Oops, I should have put these in red. So I'm going to outline them in red right there. There, they look a little bit different. Put that one up there to make it look a little bit the same. There we go. But you can see that it's red. Okay. So I'm starting with negative 8. Negative 8 goes here. And I am sub going further down the number line, so I am subtracting 6 each time. So a minus goes here, and a 6 goes here. And that's all. So what this looks like is a sub 1 is equal to negative 8. a sub n is equal to a sub n minus 1 minus 6. That's my recursive rule for that arithmetic sequence. Okay? Now, let's go to the next one. You're going to tell me what you're starting with. Then, we're going to uh, write how we're going to find the next term. And the way we do that is we start with the previous term. And then, you're going to tell me what you're doing and what number you're doing it with. The first term is negative 45. Okay. And here I'm going closer to zero. I'm going up the number line. So I am adding three. So what this one will look like, a sub one is equal to negative 45. A sub n is equal to a sub n minus one plus three. That's what this rule looks like. Now, what we did in class is we stopped and we went to our worksheet and we only did the ones that were arithmetic. Remember, you've already done this. So I'm going to pause this, give you a few minutes to work, and then when you're finished, you can just start back up. Okay, so now you've had an opportunity to work on your arithmetic sequences. Now let's take care of the geometric sequences. It works just the same. So I'm going to start here. Well, let's fold this down so that it looks a little busy. So we're going to take care of that. Okay, so we just want to see this part. These are all geometric sequences. Notice on this first one, we're multiplying by 3. We've already done these before. Now we're going back and we're actually writing the rules. So remember, with our recursive rule, you need to determine what the first term is, the value of the first term. So the value of our first term is going to be 4. That's going to go in that box. Then to find the nth rule, you could be looking for the 200th term, okay? Or not rule, but term. To find the nth term, remember you have to know the previous. So if I'm looking at for the 200th term, I must know the 199th term. If I don't know that, using this rule, I can't determine what the 200th rule is. So I need the previous. That's what the n minus 1 stands for. Then you're going to tell me what you're doing, what operation you're using, and what number you're doing that operation with. So for a sub 1, the answer is 4. 4 is the first term in this sequence. And we are multiplying by 3 because 4 times 3 is 12. 12 times 3 is 36. So I'm going to put times and then 3. So this rule is a sub 1 is equal to 4. a sub n 
is equal to a sub n minus 1 uh, times 3. As a matter of fact, for that one, what they'll probably have, and I'm just going to write this down here, is that's probably going to be written a sub n is equal to 3 times a sub n minus 1. And that's simply because we say 3x, not x3. So there's nothing wrong with this one, but this is the way you're going to see it written. So I want to show you how it will be written. Okay? Occasionally I forget, but anyway, that's that one. Let's go to the second one. Okay? Example number two. A sub 1 is 40. You have to tell me what that is first. Now to find A sub n, whatever n term you're looking for, you must start with the previous. Then you're going to tell me what operation you're using and what number you're using that operation with or goes with that operation. So these are the three things that you have to tell me. The first one is this is 40. Okay? And then I am multiplying by one half. Now, of course, we're dividing by two, but remember, multiplying by one half is the same as dividing by two. You're taking half. Okay, so that's the rule. So this one will look like this. A sub 1 is equal to 40. And A sub n is going to be equal to 1 half times A sub n minus 1. And that is because we say 1 half x. We don't say x 1 half. That's the way that one's going to look. Okay, You can pause at any time that you want to work ahead and maybe see if you're getting them correct. Okay, on this one, you got to tell me what the first term is. Then to find the term that you're looking for, you must know the previous term. Okay, you have to tell me three things. Of course, you're going to tell me what the first term is. Then you're going to tell me what operation you're using. And then you're going to tell me what number you're using that operation with. A sub 1 is 2500, 0.25. And I am multiplying by 2. These are doubling. 1 times 2 is 2. 50 cents times 2 is a dollar. A quarter times 2 is 50 cents. So we're multiplying by 2. Now what this one is going to look like is A sub 1 is going to be equal to 0 0.25 a sub n is going to be equal to a sub n oops I forgot it's going to be 2 times a sub n minus 1 so this is a 2 not a very good 2 but a 2 okay Sorry about that. Okay, now we're going to go here to number four. You're going to tell me what the first term is, and that's one-tenth. Then, to find the next term, you are going to uh, take the previous term, and then you're going to tell me what operation you're using and what number you're doing that operation with. And this is my first term. Okay. This is 0 0.1. Okay. Obviously, I'm multiplying by 10. Okay. So that's it. That's all you, you need to know, or the person needs to know to generate this. So a sub 1 is equal to 0 0.1. a sub n is equal to huh, 10 <laughs> times a sub n minus 1. And that's that rule. Let's go back up here and fix this. This was going to bother me. A sub 1 is equal to 0 0.25. And a sub n is equal to 2 times a sub n minus 1. Okay? That's that rule. And let's just, yeah. We just won't worry about that. Okay? It's written better like this. Okay, so take that, work with it, let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.